Basketball is my life. I have nothing else. Yeah, put that on social media. Shooters. That's what we do. This is incredible. This yeah. is the best yeah. grateful I've ever heard. Shooters, a basketball podcast. Let's go. Episode four, Shooters Podcast. Let's go. Let's do it. I accidentally started tipping us off with the intro without pressing record, but don't worry. Jack's got my back. What's been happening? Well, little updates. I just got a whoop watch today. A whoop what? <laughs> Yeah, it's yes so if you don't know what it is it's a watch without they can't tell the time but it pretty much just tracks sleeping heart rate like the whole shabam i'll work out with it on i'll train with it on just to, to see if i can improve my performance a little bit it's mostly recovery tools like to let you know how like your body is recovering what's working well stuff like that so that arrived in the post today so i'm pretty excited about that what about yourself i've never, I've never heard of that i've never heard of that before there you go is it essentially like a is it like a Fitbit, except, I don't know, not yeah. as high tech maybe? Yeah, it's pretty similar. It's just 24-7, so I'll never take this thing off now. Like you charge yeah. it on it, like, yeah, you know, you charge like the charger, you plug it on, this thing never comes off. When I train, I'll have a little sleeve that I'll like put it in and it will like heart rate, all that good stuff and uh, let me know if I'm uh, working hard. Yeah, nice, nice. You might hope it's not uncomfortable, but... Yeah, yeah, exactly. Lots of basketball away from NBL as well. The Opals, all that. Well, let's, let's start it off with the Opals, huh? Let's do it. Um, yeah, you were watching it, weren't you? Yeah. Yes, I was. I watched uh, all the playoff games. Yeah, I was. Um, I think I missed the first. Actually, no, I think I watched all the last um, few, the, the, the important ones. But I'll tell you what, there was a real sort of vibe about them. Like, it was good to see all the... I don't know how active you are on Twitter, but I'm definitely a bit too active at times. Um, but yeah, there was like a big vibe about it. Like everyone was following along closely and loving what they were seeing. So it's always cool when the Australian basketball community gets together with whatever games are being played, really. A hundred percent, especially at being in Sydney. Uh, what more could you ask for? I mean, the Basketball Australian Women's Program for the last as long as it's been going, it's been a premier program in the world. Like, you know, it's like top three continuously being in that spot, number two, number one at times, uh, you know. And so for them to come out in home soil, grab away that bronze, what more could you ask for? Uh, it was an awesome week, eight games in 10 days, which is just unbelievable in its own right. We're talking about it, how sore and tired they must be. Yeah. Once now the adrenaline has calmed down, they definitely are. I know WNBL preseason is going at the moment, but they definitely deserve a couple of weeks off. <laughs> I know if I was a coach, they'd be happy with me. I'd be like, go on a holiday for two weeks. We'll catch you shortly. But uh, no, awesome week. And then obviously the end result of Lauren Jackson was just an yes. unbelievable story in itself. Yeah, I was, about to, I was about to just say her name. And I'm not, like, not going to pretend like I've followed her journey like really, really closely, but it's hard not to... Like, I, I swear I was watching the end of that with her, like, talking to the camera and all the scenes after. It's almost hard not to get emotional about it, like, to be honest. You're just like, I don't know, you kind of just recognise the greats. And, um, yeah, it's really cool to see, especially when it's their last game and they go out with some sort of, like, it's still a really good achievement and stuff, even though it wasn't gold. But did you see the way they, um, or she phrased winning bronze over gold? No, I did not see it. So yeah. she was like, I think she, now I'm not directly quoting it here, but she was saying something about, um and early on in her career she realized this as well but she there's a certain satisfaction of winning bronze because you actually like you win something it's not like you lose um yeah it was something like that it's not like you lose the gold game to get silver or something you actually achieve something by winning the end result yeah. which i kind of got yeah well there's, there's been some interesting studies done on like overall perceived of success of tournaments and like months later like athletes will rate the overall experience of a tournament much higher and much more rewarding and think they did a better job if they actually get the bronze over silver. So just a weird way of our human brains, you know, obviously you leave, you end on that high note, them celebrating on the court, them being there in the locker room, you know, in a, in a, like a must win game or, you know, nothing worse than come fourth places. That's, that's hard as an athlete. Devastating, devastating. But no, it was super cool to watch. Um, before we jump into more, basketball i was gonna get you to do you remember a few weeks ago you were you were meant to get back to me and you didn't get back to me about a few it. things I didn't. do you know what i'm about to say you probably do 100 percent. i got my <laughs> notes ready i'm actually i'm actually prepared i got the top 10 health benefits of saunas written wow. on my phone that right sounds like a, that sounds like a straight google 
Yeah. No, I'm oh, not. Sorry. Okay, fine. Read him, read him out. Go for it. It's a couple of podcasts, you know. I had to do a little bit of study, of course, but I didn't want to get any of the facts wrong. So we'll just... The biggest one, heart health. Okay. In the high temperature, forces your heart to work a little harder. Use muscles that you don't necessarily always use. I'm not going to go into the science of it, but it's like doing a bicep curl for your heart. You're just working things that you don't normally work in your regular day life, which put stress on your body, healthy stress, makes it grow, adapt, and become stronger. Uh, one I didn't know, and this is, we'll just leave it with two, but this one I found interesting is recovery for athletes post-exercise, which I thought <laughs> fascinating. And so you can get your hard lift in your training and then you go hit a sauna. And uh, it's the same thing. It like dilutes like the blood and uh, helps that blood rotation fly around your body and put you in a state of recovering a little bit quicker, which I thought was fascinating because usually you think sweating, workout, hot, not uncomfortable, getting the ice tub. So there you go. There's some two facts for you guys. I'm, firstly, I like the facts. I like the research. But I can't imagine anything almost worse. Like if you have a really big... Say you did... We had the Melbourne Marathon here over the weekend. Say you did that and you just like put all your effort into it. What are you going to do? Jump straight after into a sauna for a half an hour or something? No, no I couldn't think of anything worse. I 100% agree with you. So, but hey, but there you go. The science doesn't lie. If you're trying to be dedicated, maybe you go jump in the sauna after a hard workout. Who knows? Are you going to, are you going to start adding a sauna to your day or weekly routine or fortnightly routine then? Well, I would like to. I haven't found any in uh, Hobart yet that are like close and accessible because I don't want to go on my way too crazy for it. But uh, for the last two weeks, I have been doing the beach swims, 10 minutes a day. Water is freezing down here in Tasmania, about 10 degrees. Wow. Uh, so that's been a challenge. Fab, Fab and me and my little brother Lloyd have been jumping in the beach every day for 10 minutes. And, and it's, uh, it's been fun, tiring and extremely intense. Found out my heart rate. We hit 155 today uh, in the water, but uh, good fun. Couldn't, couldn't tell you what's good, what's bad, what's high, whatever. But, you know. There you go. It's pretty high. That's a good <laughs> workout in the water. Um, is that like a first, like early morning thing? First thing you do? or is it Nah, like usually a... like post-practice. Oh, okay. So instead of the ice tub, we'll, uh, we'll eat up with the team and then run down to the beach and jump in there for 10 minutes. Instead of sweating it out in the sauna, go to the beach. I think but... I'd rather the beach than the sauna, I must say. Now, point two. What was my point two? I was, I was getting you to follow up on our, our YouTube channel all those, all those years ago. You meant to do your research and have a look at them. Darren is holding me accountable on this episode, yep. and I'm it. but as you guys know, Darren had his own YouTube channel growing up. Yep, yep. I can't remember what it's called though. Blood uh, Studio. What was that? What, what's the, what's the channel called again? I wanted to see what you <laughs> what you had to say. Blood Studios. Uh, <laughs> that's a Brotherhood Studios. Yeah, yeah. So it's just me and my brother. You see, so yeah. it works out well. Well, I haven't actually had time to check it out yet. That's so. alright. That's We're right. going to have to run this back next week. That's and cool. I promise you that there's going to be a highlight package on my uh, on my Instagram. Wow. That's a bit too much. But yeah, no, no, no. That's, the... that's, what, that's, what we, that's, that's the level we're holding this to. Although it's pretty much um, the recent stuff, you commented those emojis on um, that Phoenix shoot. So it's pretty much that stuff, just longer form. So yeah, really well, how, how was that? So, you're, so you did uh, Media Day with Phoenix? Yeah, yeah. So me and my brother were lucky enough to just yeah pop down to the Southeast Melbourne Phoenix Media Day and pretty much just run one of their stations there. So yeah, we just like to have a bit of a bit of fun with it, show some behind the scenes with it, and put together a little, little video on YouTube. So Brotherhood Studios, check it out if you wish. Well, that's the perfect plug. <laughs> I love uh, that fact that we've got a basketball player, a non-basketball player that is in the field every single day, though. So extremely educated round one what did you love who who impressed you what games did you enjoy so, go, as, a, as a fan's perspective yeah yeah um well we kicked it off with you guys didn't get the result but i was still there you were there yep. you, you were locked in um i think it was just we, we say this every year but just good to have basketball back in regular season form like who doesn't love that meaning for basketball like you guys been probably counted down to it for ages and We've been doing the same, I guess, um, at NBL HQ, just kind of like, yeah, counting down towards it. But I made some notes of some imports that did some big things, did some nice things. So Derek Walton Jr., I don't know if you got a chance to see what he did, but 
it's always it's always hard. Like obviously Jalen Adams comes in, wins MVP, does his thing, and then you're the next guy in town. Like you're the next guy in his spot. But I reckon he's going to be just fine. Like he was he was great. Um, he was incredible. He's length on his strides when attacking to the basket were unbelievable. Some of those transition moves, it was like charge. Nope, he got around him and laid it up. So, actually, so I, I agree. It's it's a tough situation to be in and. Game one, you couldn't have asked for much more. Yeah, I actually can envision right now in my brain, like in my memory, the pretty sure the play you were talking about, how I thought he was just going to go like barrel through someone. He was like, no, nah, I got this. It's fine. Um, yeah. Derek Pardon, he surprised yeah. me with how good he was. Like, I couldn't pinpoint like a main sort of like offensive skill he has, but he just like, he just hustles and he's like that energetic big that does his thing. And I think he finished with 20 points and 10 rebounds or something. So. Yep. doing his thing and lastly I don't know what you think of um, Xavier Rattan Mays as like a bench guy or a starter what do you what do you just as an observer like I know he was in the the league last year but do you reckon he, he suits coming off the bench or is that that starting guy mm, well honestly I think it's pretty meaningless I know that's like the answer we're told <laughs> to say but that's like cool. reality comes like what's your what's your lineup in the last five six minutes of the game yeah, and to me, like he's going to be on the court in the last five six minutes of the game, so maybe he might get to be a bit more aggressive uh, if he comes off the bench. Maybe, but then it all depends on coaching rotations, and uh, mm-hmm. like you know, some coaches like to put kind of slowly wean a five in five off. You know, some coaches hate doing that, want kind of three starters on the whole time, and you push through rotations. So. This is where, like, when you talk to Hoopers about it, it's, uh, don't get me wrong, it feels good to start and everyone wants to be a starter, but I would much rather be playing the last five minutes of the game than uh, starting the game. And to me, he's going to be making plays with the ball in his hands in the last five minutes of the game. Regardless, and, yeah. And, and, you know, and, and he came up with the, the big win in the overtime and, yeah. and he had the ball in his hands. It's a very good answer. I think you nailed that one. <laughs> You're like, hey, thanks, thanks, don't thanks. just disregard that question. But I think it's interesting sometimes because I think you're dead on. Like, all you want to do is you want to be finishing the game. So, regardless, he will be. But it is interesting, some guys, um, because they kind of do play differently at times. But yeah, I really like him as that lead guard. Like, when Shay Ely comes back, it'll be interesting what they do. But Definitely. like you said, how about you? How was round one for you guys? Yeah, round one was a learning experience. Uh, you know, it's. It's 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 good. It's exciting. It was it was a tough weekend. Um, that's the life of the NBL. I mean, the level of competition is so high, and so we'll go into. We had an off day today after the doubleheader. It is today is a Monday, Tuesday. Tuesday. <laughs> there you go. When season's happening, I work by game days. Um, I like that. And then like that. we go in tomorrow, and it'll be film. It will be readjusting. Uh, cleaning up some things that, to be honest, we kind of had red flagged the last couple of weeks. Uh, defensively, things we're not happy with. Um, and that's going to be the focus of this week. You know, we know the style of basketball we can play. And we've shown about three quarters of it in the two games of like, oh, this is Jack Jumpers. They kept teams for a 15 point quarter. That's the way they want to play intense, physical, uh, some things we're going to clean up and hopefully we're going to learn from it. And, uh, it was just good to be back out there playing basketball. Yeah, I was going to say at the end of the day, I'm sure that's what most players are feeling, whether you start well or start badly. Like it's And it's so early days. Like I know it's the NBL season, it can go by pretty quickly. Like, I yeah. don't know, suddenly you lose five in a row or whatever it is and whatnot. But yeah, it's like the blitz. You can't read too much into it to begin with. It's literally round one. So Yeah, and I tell you what, it was a uh, shout out to the Jack Jumpers fans because it was a sold out arena. That place was rocking and... uh I'm itching already to get back next Sunday against Brisbane. Yeah, I can I can vouch. I've only had one experience there in the, in the grand final, and that was that place was it's just as advertised essentially. Yeah, yeah it's unbelievable. Yeah, it's good. Um, that leads nicely because I was going to say it's only round one, and one team hasn't even played, and that obviously is Adelaide. So we all saw what they did. Very good. Yeah, round of applause for them. Historic win, and it was pretty crazy to watch. I don't know if you caught much of it or just saw the whole I a little bit of it it was like during my nap time game day yeah uh, so a little bit but it was definitely unbelievable I, I checked out i ended up watching the whole game back and the highlights and it was yeah it was wild it was wild like i it's just funny watching it like we had it on in the office and everyone was kind of just like watching it around and doing their thing but yeah it was it's just really cool to watch because like 
I don't know what NBA, um, like the NBA world kind of thinks of it. They're probably just like, yeah, don't really take it that seriously or whatever. But there's a lot of people reacting like, oh, wow, they're actually going to do this. So it was good to see them close it out. And yeah, Craig Randall and Robert Franks just shot the hell out of it. 100%. It's just another, it's another show of like quality of basketball in Australia. You know, and this has been constantly happening now for the last multiple years. You know, you get guys like Josh Giddy, the mellow ball, come into the league, play well, and then go into the NBA and thrive. You got uh, Team USA coming down to Australia and losing to Australia. Then you got Australia going to the Olympics, getting bronze. And now you got an NBL team being an NBA team in the preseason. And it's just all these little things that just let people know and let us know, hey, we're very good at basketball. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. It is true, though. Like, people are going to take notice. Like, people see these things and they make some research into Australia, into Australian basketball, the NBL. So, it's only, it only does a good thing. It's only positive. No, 100%. 100%. And, yeah, it just grows the brand of basketball in Australia and lets the world know that we play hard and we're, we're some tough dudes down here in Australia and uh you know, just like the women's and the men's, it's good programs, good grassroots basketball, and and it's shown at the top. Yeah, definitely. And watching, um, just a quick segue, watching Franks and Craig, Randall do their thing. I was going to ask, if I was there to you, um, like your best, like your top sort of scrolling moment where you're feeling yourself the most, is there any like memories that pop into mind where you just like, you just feel great about yourself, you're, you're putting on a shooting clinic or anything like that? Is there anything that pops into your mind when I say that? For me, myself. For yourself, sorry, yeah, for yourself. Not just anyone random. Yeah, just... I would have to say probably one of my favourite, like, moments or, like, shots was that, like, step back deep three game two against Melbourne. Okay. Yeah, I actually, but, I think like, I'm, yeah, yeah. You, you're yeah, talking last, last season? Year, it was, like, not much shot clock. I made a little step back to about the Bunnings and, and the second I let it go, it was my second one in a row from the exact same spot. I kind of just knew it was in. And I would have to say for me, whenever I see that, I... I feel pretty good about myself. <laughs> but, I was about to say that. Um, I was about to say, is it that the one that you pretty much drained the exact same thing the play after? Yep. Like it was two in a row. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what about yourself? With uh, do you get that same feeling with uh, videos or some sort of piece of art you put together, uh, particularly in basketball? I thought you were about to ask me for my um, like social domestic days just playing yeah. around which which i do play well i used to play like open meds for a bit but i'm thinking about retiring it's done it's cool yeah, there you go. Um, yeah um no it's more just i think when you just when you just realize you've captured a good player like the classic if someone has a nice dunk or a nice block or something but if you're on the baseline or wherever you are and you you just know you're pressing record at the same time and you're you've actually caught it it is a very satisfying feeling but at the same time if you miss it and you're in the perfect spot you're just like no, I'm, I'm dirty. I'm filthy. Any, so not, no uh, particular moments come to your mind or photographs you've caught that you're really proud of? There was a few last year. Um, Joe Lawala Chul, like, you know how he, he loves his, like, mean mugs and sort of celebrations yeah. after his thing. And there was a good one where I wasn't even on the baseline, which I kind of I kind of like roaming around in different areas when I'm doing it. Um, yeah. yeah, so I was kind of, like, off to the side and the photo was, like, him just doing the too small movement, I think. Um, yeah. the celebration then but you can kind of see like the crowd and kids in front of him and it kind of just like frames up really nicely and yeah there's moments like that where you're kind of like yeah I've done alright here yeah nice no, it's yeah. Awesome. so yeah but no it's a good feeling once, once you capture it yeah, um, yeah, same as hey you, you make the big shot I make the big shot exact same feeling shooters that's that's what we do. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Put that on social media. <laughs> Promo lines. Um, yeah. Another thing that we were discussing about the NBL NBA games. What do you think about um, if the NBL were to go to forty eight minutes as a player? Mm, it's a great question. Hmm. When I was younger in the league, I'm still young, twenty six. I haven't even touched my. Right. I was going to say prime time. You like twenty? Yeah, what do they but... say is your prime? Like twenty eight or something. I don't know. I reckon with my game, 32. So we've still got another six years. You know, I'm not, my athleticism won't drop. I'm good to go. But it's oh. a whole different conversation. <laughs> when I was a rookie and younger, not getting many minutes, I was, I would pray for it. I said, I wish that we could play 48 minutes. Um, now I would probably say, I, I like that we're associated with FIBA basketball probably. And I enjoy the 40 minute game. What about yourself? Um, I think I can see, like sort of benefits to both like like you said i think it's yeah i think it's 
it's good that we're kind of like our own away from the NBA and FIBA. We kind of take after like what they do. But it, I think from a fan's perspective, like a general fan, like you already saw the stats that like Mitch McCarron put out 16, like dished out 16 dimes. Like, yep. I don't know what his career high in the NBL is, but just things like that, to, that kind of make the general fan probably more intrigued or more impressed by it. But it shouldn't yep. be like that, but sometimes it is. So. I agree. Well, that's an interesting point you bring up about assists because sometimes I think we, I wish we did the assists a bit more like the NBA. Hmm. Because obviously, I think here it's one dribble, maybe no dribbles is an assist. When hmm. in the NBA, it's like if you create kind of the action, sometimes it's two dribbles uh, is an assist and stuff like that. And that stuff, as you said, does create conversation points, especially on social media, which is an important part of growing uh, the game of basketball. It is, and you're always going to get those people that compare the leagues, and that's how they do it. They're like, oh, this dude averaged... like It's probably like the same with Lamelo Ball and stuff because they've played in both leagues. They're probably com- going to compare the stats and be like, oh, I didn't expect him to be this good or whatnot, but it's because yep. it's not the same, obviously. Um, one last one i got for you. Nick Marshall. You said you were... That's your boy? That's your guy? Yes. Yeah, me and Mickey are, are very good friends. When he came back from college, I kind of... We became mates. We started playing one-on-one, working out every single day because we were playing for North Adelaide Rockets together. Just a bench player at the time. Hadn't been playing basketball for very long. Uh, and then decided to stay. Was kind of a training guy at Adelaide and has found his path into being called uh, one <laughs> of the greatest DPs of all time. That is, of course, where I was going with it. I was just like, best development player ever, Antonius Cleveland, giving that shout out there. But I was thoroughly enjoying the, like, the hype he was getting. I don't know if you saw the um, so, like, the results for that overtime elite yep. game. Yeah. yeah, of course. He yeah. went up there and had, what, 22 and 10? Yeah, I think it was yeah 23 and 10 or something. So I was, it's, you need things like that to kind of put these young people, young talent in your face, and you're like, hey, yeah. That kid's yeah. got something, but... 100%. Well, um, yeah, 100%. I back my boy, Nicky. Uh, I love him. He's a great dude. And, uh, you know, someone saying some crazy stuff like that, not that it might not be true or we're not, it gets it gets people noticed. So you heard it here first. Shawnee Mack, the greatest DP <laughs> to ever play in the MVL. <laughs> I actually... <laughs> That's great. I actually think one of the commentators said something similar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They said they're like hold hold the fort on that or something. Sean McDonald has something to say. It was quite funny. Yeah. It's quite good. Um, yeah, shout out to Shawnee for real though. He's someone that you know is taking the most of his opportunity and uh, is playing some good basketball right now. Yeah, he had some moments in the blitz as well. Like again, you you put you put it like it could be as simple as making a few shots and then you kind of just like who's that dude? Like who's that dude? Yeah. Like and for the general fan, you might not know who Sean McDonald is, but keep doing those things and. You will. Um, Nick Marshall is one of the ones that kept uh, playing to 2K room in the media day at Darwin, by the way. So he wasn't great at it. He wasn't great at it. I'm just going to put it out there. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> you know, you got to come. Nick, Nick, let's put it here first. Nick Marshall, worst 2K DP player of all time. <laughs> no, no, no. We, we can run with that. You got to see, you got to take the criticism and you got to take the compliments. <laughs> yeah, 100%. 100%. We'll do both. Uh, rate or hate time? What do you reckon? Yeah, it sounds lovely. Sounds lovely. You pumped. Yeah. Excited for it. Um, I got one for you. Yeah. I got one. Um, now this is. I'm just gonna say, like Nickelback, the band Nickelback. Actually, before hang on, before before I say anything, I've been made aware by a few people that I'm way too indecisive when you give yeah, me. Yeah, a... <laughs> I've been saying that now. Yeah. Since this thing started. So I'm gonna make a conscious effort. As soon as you give me it, I'm going to be... Not not immediately, but I'm going to try to be like... Because my brother was just like, Darren, it's right or hate. Like, you don't need to go into some detail about whether what you think of it. Just give us something. Just stop messing around. So, you know, message received. I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad. I felt... I was starting to feel like a bully. Like, no, I no just... give me one. And you're like, oh, I'm just trying to be positive. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> I just sat on the fence way too much. But don't worry. Uh, Nickelback. Hey, mm. not really interested. Uh, that type of music doesn't tickle. I'm more of like a barefoot acoustics or hip hop. Uh, they're kind of like my genres. And so, yeah. Hey, what about yourself? Right. See, <sighs> just let me see. I feel like Nickelback and Creed, I don't know if you know them, but they're, they're the bands that people always rag on. I swear, they're always like the, the center of the jokes. And I'm always just like, 
I actually like both of them. Just want to come oh. clean here. Just want to come clean. Yeah. Got to back yourself. Grew up with them. My dad like put me into those type of music. So Nickelback, you've got a fan here. I'm I'm not afraid to admit it. Well, do you have a favorite song? I'm not gonna go that far. No, I don't. Uh, actually, that's another thing I'm really indecisive with. You ask me to name my favorite anything, and I'll be like, can't do it. Oh well, then we're gonna we're gonna have to work on this. I'm gonna be shooting you some messages throughout the week. What's your favorite this? What's your favorite that? It's a learning process. Don't worry, I'll get better. Just yeah. like yeah, just like I I'll like get it. better at rate or hate. All right, um, I got you on a rate or hate. Uh, ice tubs. Ice? What did you say? What? Like ice tubs. Like oh. recovery <laughs> ice tubs. All right, all right. I mean, I can't say I've used too many in my time, but. You know, I see the benefits and I'll leave it at that. Decisive. Well, we'll, have to, we'll have to get in one uh, together and maybe do a little like, you know, the Kevin Hart, the Kevin Hart say, deal. I'll, I'll interview you. You can interview me while you're shivering away. And I hope I'm <laughs> more prepared for it. Hey, I'd much rather ice tubs than a sauna. So there you go. So if I was had to make a decision, choose, choose yeah, one. Nice. Um, next one, not so... Not so controversial, but subtitles on videos. Whenever you're watching a YouTube, I know you don't watch much, uh, you know, general TV, yep. but YouTube videos, subtitles on, subtitles off. No, I'm, I hate. You're making okay. me like a negative dude. You'd be hitting me with all these things. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't want no subtitles. Only subtitles I use is in video games. So sometimes oh, in video yeah. games, like yeah. I'll put the subtitles because I'm not really paying, but in a movie, nah, it distracts me. What about yourself? I was, oh, sorry, right, just quickly. Yeah, um, yeah so um, I was never, and then I changed a, my partner once again, influence, just influencing all these things, basically. Yeah, yeah. But now, I, I quite rate it, except for the only thing I can't do it with is comedy shows, because you don't want a joke ruined before. Like, I just have my habit of lowering my eyes, see what's coming up, and by the time they actually say it, you're like, well, I'm not finding it as funny as I used to be, so. Yeah, no, that's a good one. That, that yeah. Just spread. Yeah. <laughs> I like, okay, I got one. So, college shirts. Oh, dear. Um, well, that's not, but that is actually one you can, no, I'll rate it. Like, it's nothing. Like, <laughs> yeah, <I don't> <laughs> there's, there's nothing like, yeah, no, I'll rate it. Yeah, yeah. So, how often do you put on a college shirt? Um, I'd say, like, mostly for work, just like casual, not nothing too fancy. And then, look, if someone's having a birthday or something, are we going to? I don't know, some restaurant, some some bar or anything, I'll occasionally chuck one on, but yeah. not too often. How about yourself? I would, no, I'm not a fan. Not a fan at I'm, all? I'm a very casual dresser. Like, if I can just put on, like, a plain tee yeah. or, or a hoodie, like, that's jack happy. Okay. Um, I will put on a collar if I need to to get into somewhere. Hmm. That's the only time I would really wear a collar. Does that mean, um, do you ever feel like, like, you know how there's typically one person in a group that people will always be like, they dress down to everyone, like, they're just, they just don't dress up to par? Like, you always that guy, like, you're going to rock up to a hoodie at a wedding or something? <laughs> nah, see, I'll, I'll dress up nice, but, like, throughout, like, the week, or, like, I'm not wearing shoes, um, and pretty much just trackies, trackies and hoodies. Like, if I'm going to a club, I'll try and put on some trackies that look like jeans and a hoodie. Mm. I'll be pretty happy with that. I can respect that though. I, I, if I had to make a choice, I'd probably want this to a nice t-shirt if it was that way though. But yeah, you know, mix sure. it up. For sure. Um, last one I got for you. This is this is personal to you. Just putting it out there. Um, so the theme of the first game was of course you versus Phoenix. Yep. And bleach blonde hair was on display, which threw me back to you. I don't know how long ago and since your last, you know, um, occurrence of having bleach blonde hair but i was just like jack's bleach blonde hair right or hey is it ever coming back Ooh, Ooh, good question i just want to know this just personally I just i've had to... it twice now yep because you had it last time was the boomers run right yep yep boomers and then that the time before i've had it three times now sheesh there you go oh i i rate it i rate it will it happen again though is a completely different question yeah i don't think so okay you're maybe in a couple of years if i get bored and want to embarrass like say my kids in like 10 years <laughs> like i'm all for that but right now i'm pretty happy with just shaving my hair and 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 being done with that shout you out to freaky for the blonde hair too yeah of course that's who i was referencing um do you cut your own hair there 
Yes, I do. Uh -huh. I cut Fab's hair as well. So almost a team barber. Beautiful, beautiful. I just thought I'd throw that in there just to, you know, see where you're... Because you had the um, the other hairstyle, I remember, with yours. Was, didn't you have a mohawk of some description? I, I don't know what to call it. I don't know how yes. you describe No, it. so I pretty much, every now and then, I'll, like, wake up and be like, I want to do something different with my hair mm. and do something crazy. And that's kind of been what I've been doing since I was, like, 14, 13. So, like, sometimes I have the urge just to go zero, which I never really pulled the trigger on that, but I've always wanted to. Um, and sometimes it's a mohawk. Who knows? Who knows? So who knows where my hair could lead me in a year or two? Yeah, that's really exciting stuff. That's really yeah. Well, maybe, that. maybe one day I'll grow it out and try and look like uh, Kenny, Matt Kenyon. Oh, yeah. Yeah, go yeah. for it. Um, I need my hair cut right now. It's looking too long. So maybe, you know, next time you're in Melbourne, just give me a free cut or something. There just you go. I promise I'll, uh, I'll dominate it. Lovely. Uh, one more. Do you have one more for me? I do, but I'm not sure how much. Well, uh, getting a barber. So it's crazy you asked me that last time uh, to shave your beard and line your beard. Do you rate it or do you hate it? I'm going to go hate it. I'm going to go hate it. Is this the first <laughs> hate it final? No, no. No, last week. Last week we got. we Because lo last week when I was listening back to it, I'm not, I was editing it. I wasn't just listening back to our own voices. Talk really to us. To fall um, asleep. I get it. It's okay. We all do it. We all do it. Um, no, because last week you reacted the same way. You're like, we need to get your first hate. And then, like, about a minute later, I said hate to. Yeah, but you were the one that said, gave the question. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, maybe it didn't actually count. Okay. That's fine. Yeah. yeah cool. Yep. Yeah, first ever hate. Have you ever had a bad experience or? I think it's more just, um, you know, I just can't grow something as like big and like impressive enough to get the barber to actually do it. So I'm just like, I can just do it myself. Like, have you, so have you ever had the barber do it? No, no, actually. Yeah. So they're like, you know, I might trim up the sideburns or just make it look neat, but they've never properly, you know, but you have to get, you got to pay extra for that as well, don't you? Yeah, you do. Sometimes it can be expensive too. Yeah, it's it's too, it's already too expensive in my area, so I'm like, nah. Used yep. to pay fifty bucks for a haircut, and I lowered it down, which is good. But yeah, I've heard Melbourne haircuts can get very expensive. Yes, yes, this is true. This is yeah. true. Maybe I'll have to open up a side hustle in Melbourne. You could you just do it at like twenty bucks or something. Jack like, cuts, yeah. You need a better name than that, but just you know, putting it out there. It's all right. That's okay. Right. I'm a Grateful. fan, but it's all right. <laughs> Grateful for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. good 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 well it's the my favorite time you know gratitude time mm. have you got something to lead us off i do i do so this one this one relates back to what i was talking about earlier well sort of with lauren jackson but i was gonna go like just target one person individually for who i'm grateful for and that was of course the great andrew gaze i'll just tell you why because i was um just many reasons obviously who he is as a basketballer yeah great but you know, you know how they always say, like, never meet your idols. Yeah. Pretty sure someone at the office, um, I don't know how long ago it was. It's just like they just said, like, never meet your idols unless it's Andrew Gaze. He's just such a, he's just such a good personality. And I was editing a video, like, all the commentators basically got fitted out with men's club gear, like suits yep. and lots of collars for yourself. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was just editing a video where him and Leonard Copeland were just like playing it up to it and just like having a great time and i was literally just having a good old like smile and laugh as i was editing it because yeah, nice. he's just such a good personality like and you just got to appreciate people who one like you're obviously fantastic at a sport which everyone loves but as soon as you get to know them off the court and it's not like i know him but yeah he's just a great fun personality that i'm pretty sure like all of australia loves so yeah shout out gazy well there you go shout out to angie gaze that's a cool one yep yep uh, for me this week, and this one hits home, especially after the weekend, is I'm grateful for how quickly basketball games go back to back. <laughs> mm, yeah. So it's one of the beautiful parts of basketball is you can play on Friday, Sunday or Saturday, Monday, and then you could be running it back on Thursday. And once basketball season starts, basketball season is going. And uh, that's something I'm very grateful for is, is we get to go to work tomorrow, prepare, plan, fly to New Zealand, and we're right back on the horse on Friday. Oh, yeah, you guys are playing the first um, yeah, first game back in New Zealand, right? Yep, 100%. So we start that this Friday. Pressure's on. You can't upset. You, you almost just like you can't upset the home fans after everything that's been through, right? 
I'll tell Scott that. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine just like saying to him in a serious sense, like, I think we should ease up on them tonight. No, yeah, 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 yeah. No, obviously fantastic to see them come back. But yeah, you're right. Turn around quickly. And I can't imagine what it's like playing in the NBA like that. You literally play like unbelievable on, day on, day off sometimes pretty much. Yeah. Sometimes they play, fly that night to the next city, land 4 a.m. and play that night. Mm, I can't imagine like just like hotel life. I'm sure you're 100% used to it. But what what is it actually like just like having a new home every every week i don't know like i would say the weekends get you it's it's definitely tiring yeah like the weekends when you just have a single home game are very greatly appreciated that's for sure yeah i can imagine i was gonna say like i had like my my experience in darwin i was like as soon as i got home after a week i was like thank god but you guys would just be like thank god i'm here for two days or something sometimes and be like yeah. I'm shipped back off, but yeah, no, yeah. It's, good. it's good. We definitely make the most of our home time, like off day today, just lying around the home and enjoying that. And the routine of it is uh, nothing better. Lovely. Lovely. Anything else happening for you this week off that doesn't relate to basketball? That is. No, nah, that's, that's about it. You're like basketball is my life. I have nothing else. Yeah. <laughs> nothing but shooters pod and basketball. That's all I'm focused on right now. That's all you need. I'm doing I'm doing a first this week on the weekend. So I'm filming a wedding, which I've wow. never, never done before. So, awesome. you know, it's quite a jump from, uh, you know, shooting some people playing basketball to shooting yeah. some people lovely with the loves of their lives and not yeah. messing up those moments. So it should be different. Good yeah, that's awesome. What day is that? Very good question. Sunday, Saturday. I don't know. Let's go Saturday. Yeah. It's on. It's on Saturday, Jack. Yes. There you go. There you go. I'm excited. Well, I'll make sure. Uh, make sure you crush it, which I know you will, because uh, you're very good at what you do. Oh, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. No, I'll do my best. But yeah. All right. We'll catch you guys next week. Thanks for tuning in, as always. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Appreciate you guys.